Hey guys, welcome to the video. This is the board we're going to be checking out today. This is the Hunan X99 board and it's very similar to some of the Chinese made X79 boards. So as far as packaging, it's pretty simple, straightforward, just like these other Chinese boards, plain packaging. We do get some mounting hardware and this one did come with a CPU that I ordered at the same time. I did get some SATA cables, CD drivers, and manual as well as a interesting warranty card which i'm not sure these boards actually have a warranty I, I didn't know they did now this board does have some like plastic and i'm not sure why they put these stickers on top of the ram slots but i gotta take those off and here you can get a better look at the board now there were some screws that were in the bag that the motherboard was in they were rattling around so that's not a good sign and here we can check out the I.O. So it's pretty basic, you got four USB 3s, four USB 2s, gigabit, audio, and two PS2 ports. Really similar to some of the other X79 Chinese made boards. But we do get this white shroud, it's a single piece of plastic, and the PCIe slots are metal, so that's kind of cool. A little bit more of a quality kind of feel to the board. But you've probably noticed the VRM heatsink it has two fans on it, but the actual heatsink itself is kind of small. But these fans are actually ran off two cables, so they're not speed controlled or anything. It's just one setting. That's the, the setting they spin at. So for the memory, we can actually use DDR3 and DDR4, but there's a big condition on that. And DDR3 is only supported on certain Haswell eCPUs. Now I'll put those on the screen now. The other condition on this is they can't be used at the same time. So you can only use DDR4 or DDR3. This board actually has three full width PCIe 16X slots. They're wired 16X and CPUs on this platform have a ton of PCIe lanes. So you can actually use those slots, which is really cool. This board also has two NVMe slots and one M.2 slot for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, which again are PCIe slots. We also found out where those screws came from. They're, they came from the NVMe little screw holes. It came loose during shipping or something. Hopefully this didn't mess with the board or anything like that. So we'll find out when we power it on. This board has a weird configuration of fan connectors. So you got two four pin fan connectors and three three pin fan connectors. And it's kind of weird because most boards nowadays, they just have four pin fan connectors. You can connect a three pin fan to it because it's voltage controlled or a four pin fan to it because it has PWM. So there's really no need for three pin fan connectors. And since this one has four pin fan connectors, I'm not sure why some of them are three pin, some of them are four pin. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, but anyway. We have a power switch, restart switch, and debug LED, which is always welcome addition. If we take off the VRM heatsink here, just two screws in the back, we can see that uh, the fans are actually connected uh, with two wires, one for each fan, on either side of the heatsink. You can actually see this VRM is a six phase, and the MOSFETs are set up so it's two MOSFETs per phase. So this is really good. It kind of spreads out the heat a little bit more. So let's put this on the test bench, test it out, show you the BIOS, show you some other stuff with it, and get moving on. So here's the BIOS, it's the same basic gray and blue BIOS you get with all these Chinese motherboards. But I should add that uh, you should reset that time because mine defaulted to the year 2000 and Windows 10 will have some funny business if you don't change that to the correct date. So it does see the NVMe drive, so that's good. Also have some fan controls here, none of them are labeled and I couldn't seem to find anything for the actual VRM fans. Now we can set the clock ratio limit for the one core turbo boost, but that's pretty much the only overclocking settings we have other than the power limit. You should actually set the power limit because it'll allow you to stay in turbo boost longer. As far as memory timings go, we do have access to some basic primary timings 
and memory voltage will go up to 1.6 volts so that's a good thing that means you can get some pretty decent speeds so if we just open up CPU-Z we can see that it shows up as the X99 TF and we are using a X99 chipset so it's an actual X99 chipset so that's good uh, but if we go to the memory we can see that CPU-Z thinks we are on DDR4 and has no clue about the number of channels so that's not that great but if we go to the SPD profiles it, it reads it as DDR3 and from doing a IDA64 memory benchmark test it, it tells us we're in quad channel DDR3 and the memory speeds the the transfer rate of the memory does tell us we are in fact in quad channel and just a, a really quick crystal disk mark we can see that the NVMe drive is in fact with PCIe speeds so as far as VRM thermals we are looking pretty good those two little fans at full blast because they're just fed voltage do seem to actually do their job which is not really surprising. The ambient air is 25C, 26C, give or take. I think that's around like 78, 80 Fahrenheit. And the VRMs are sitting at uh, about 12, 13 degrees higher than ambient. So like I said, those fans are actually doing their job, which isn't very surprising, being as they're just fed straight current. So they're, they're running as fast as they can run, which leads me to the sound test. So these fans aren't really the quietest fans out there. I don't think anyone really expected them to be. And for whatever reason, PWM controlled little fans like this seem to be kind of hard to come by. I can understand why Hunan didn't include them in the board. That being said, they probably still should have been PWM controlled. It would have made this board so much better. So overall, this X99TF board is a good board. Compared to all the other Chinese boards I've come across, this board really feels premium and really closer to something you would expect from Asus or Azeroc or Gigabyte. And honestly, if it wasn't for the BIOS being the way it looks like and being the way it is, you could easily just take off the stickers, put like Azeroc stickers on there and tell me it's Azeroc board and I would totally believe that it's a low-end Azeroc board. It's much closer to what the major manufacturers would produce than say some of these cheap ch Chinese knockoff boards. So this board has a lot going for it. It's a good board, but let's talk about the CPUs you can actually pair with this board. So earlier we went over some CPUs you can use with DDR3. So of those CPUs, you're really looking at the 2678 or the 2696. Now these are both like higher core count CPUs, so 12 core, and then the 2696 is a 18 core, which, you know, obviously the base clock is gonna be a lot slower on these CPUs, but you get cheaper DDR3, and depending on what you're doing, you might not care too terribly. As far as Haswell CPUs, I don't know that I would get a, uh, the V3s, which are the Haswell E's, I don't know that I would actually go with these because if you're going to step into X99 like you you can get a Haswell CPUs cheaper but if you just get an X79 like a 1680V2 overclock it you're you're going to pretty much just beat all these CPUs here so I don't think it's really worth it to get a Haswell eCPU now, if we move over to the V4s, the Broadwell CPUs, though you're going to lose that DDR3 compatibility, you get much better memory overclocking, quite a bit of an IPC boost from something like Ivy Bridge or Sandy Bridge. So you don't really care too much about that base frequency because most of these here on the top end of the graph are pretty high when you consider that even overclocked, you're looking at like 4.2, 4.3 gigahertz on like an i7. Very few of these can actually get to like 4.5. The 1650 V4, 2643 V4, 
me I wouldn't even consider any of these quad cores. It's kind of a waste of time with X99. Which brings me to the i7s. So if we just go on eBay and we just search for 5960X, which that's going to be the Haswell E8 core. So these are all overclockable CPUs. And I couldn't really confirm if this board supports overclocking just because the BIOS I was using a Xeon CPU that was locked, but these really cheap BIOSes don't tend to hide any of the settings, so they just expose all the settings to you. They just don't work if your CPU doesn't support them. So if it's not in the BIOS and I didn't find it, chances are it's not there at all. So I'm going to assume that the board can't overclock. So if we look at like the 5960X, they're still going for pretty high when you actually consider like Ryzen 2 sort of IPC. So $300. $400 so it's pretty high they, they cost a lot they're not I wouldn't say they're very viable you just build a Ryzen 2 or even a Ryzen and you're probably better off for it unless you need lots of memory channels lots of PCI Express lanes and even the 6900k which is again the 8 core i7 it, it's gonna be the Broadwell version of the 5960x I mean they're they're not that much more expensive. Okay, yeah, they are. They're way more expensive. It's like $500. So, like, so I don't know how much these actually make sense compared to, say, a Ryzen build nowadays. But if you can get one of these Xeon CPUs, pretty cheap. It might make sense if you need lots of memory bandwidth, lots of PCI Express lanes. It's just remember that base frequency. Remember remember this column over here. You want to go 3.5, 3.4. And honestly, I wouldn't even consider any of these quad cores. None of these quad cores make sense nowadays. And actually looking at this list, this one over here, the 2667v4, actually looks pretty good. It has a ton of cache, it's eight core. It's got a base frequency of 3.2, turbo at 3.6. So it's not gonna run very hot. Maybe this is giving you some ideas of what you can actually expect to use with the board because these i7s are still super expensive you're still paying that intel tax and hopefully this video has given you an idea about this board in particular and it's been helpful until next time bye